Robotics are becoming more complex every day, and as we continue to build even more sophisticated machines, we start to reach into some very weird and unique concepts. So without further ado, let's begin the top 7 countdown. Beginning at number 7, the Alfred 2.0. Now this kind of looks like a walking squid awaiting to pounce on its next meal. The second version of this machine can walk in any direction since it's axisymmetric along the vertical axis, meaning it does not have any official front or back. Its symmetrical links can do all sorts of things including turning itself into a rolling predator or a two-armed menace which can destroy things. Now Romola is a laboratory which actually works on this robot and they are definitely worth following because they always come up with really crazy and strange concepts. We get to number 6 and it's the Kukas robot. Yes, even though I'm far from being the perfect commentator, there was no mispronunciation this time. This new robot is pretty weird and it performs 25,000 simulated sitting positions for each new seat design. Obviously this would be practically impossible for a normal paid employee and I'm not going to get into too many painstaking details other than it carries a half a gallon of water for sweat supplementation and that it's made to emulate a larger body form. Anyways, it guarantees that the seat will be effective for over 10 years which is not too bad. Now here's a good one for you and it's called the Dean Sect. This is a good supplementation if you're looking for a real critter to swat and this thing weighs less than a gram. The robot uses artificial muscles known as Integrated Dielectric Elastomer Polymers, DEAs for short. Each silicon leg uses one DEA so when a voltage is applied its electrodes are drawn together and the leg moves. This happens around 400 times per second and it allows the Dean Sec to move forward at 1.2 inches a second, which may not seem too much, but it's actually pretty good for this size of robot. Two versions exist, with one carrying its own onboard power supply, and the one you can actually swat at, which is connected to an external source. Now we reach number 4, and we always have to have some sort of reference to the T-1000, so here it is, liquid metal. Maybe we should blame James Cameron for giving people ideas on how to build robots, but then again, this thing is definitely unique. This prototype uses a robot leg, which is made out of a tendon fuse, which can repair itself. It does this by automatically melting itself down, and then reforming into a single piece. The alloy has a very low melting point at 50 degrees celsius, and the material around it is made of magnets and springs, which can come apart and then snap back together. However, there is one major drawback to this robotic part which can heal itself and that is that the reunified alloy is 70% weaker after it breaks. Nevertheless, we see a lot of robotics with self-healing polymers and stuff like that, so we're probably going to see more sophisticated self-healing robots in the future. We get to number 3 and it's the Urchin Bot. I was a little bit perplexed when I first seen this because I couldn't really understand what it would be used for. But sea urchins can get into some pretty difficult areas and this artificial one can mimic its real life counterpart for inspections. The urchin bot has all the fancy spines and feet for locomotion, and it uses pneumatic domes around inflatable joints which are built into the spines. Every pneumatic dome is also interconnected so you get a weird symmetrical movement of these weird arms. The feet are also controlled by a combination of hydraulics and magnetic pads. Ultimately this gives the urchin robot a pretty complex design, but unfortunately you cannot eat it. Now we get to number 2 and it's called the Leonardo. Quite a few weird bipedal robots exist now, but this one just takes it to a whole different level. At 2.5 feet tall, the robot looks like a mini droid. It uses thrusters to balance itself and that is pretty tricky because any kind of instability would create a large change in momentum. But Leo's pretty light at 6 pounds and it is actually passing initial tests. I just hope that we don't see some sort of human snatcher one day, but ultimately I think that jet engines would work well in this situation. We get to the great number one and it's the Hermes robot. I personally found this robot to be fascinating since it's bridging human locomotion with robotics. This means that robot avatars are already becoming a reality and could be used in remote or dangerous environments. Anyways, the Hermes project is now working on a tally robotic system that has two parts. One with a humanoid capable of complex actions and another being a new two-way type of feedback interface which sends the user's motions to the robot and vice versa. Basically this means that if the robot steps on debris and starts to lose its balance, the user would actually feel the same instability and can actually prevent it from falling. 
Essentially, this is bypassing the robot's responses and supercharging it with human reflexes. Now, I find this to be a really important development because, as we all know, robots do not really have very advanced human-like mobility. And taking it one step further, I think that machine learning can be implemented in this type of two-way communication and maybe even teach the robot how to move like a human on its own. Ultimately, this is a really exciting development for robotic locomotion, and I really do believe that this is one of the keys for lifelike humanoid robots. So once again, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.